The main photograph is an alpine heath butterfly. Top left is a bearded vulture. Bottom left is a marmot. Bottom right is a chamois. To see any of these animals, you'd have to go, in Europe anyway, you'd have to go to the mountains. So these are all montane animals. Very exciting, which is why we're going to Switzerland. In particular, this video is based in Pontresina. Now, I think this is a good video to talk about how these reflect what you might typically see if you're on holiday making a bit of an effort. This reflects about a week. You'll see I visit a number of sites to go for a walk, which is probably equivalent to going for a walk every day for about a week. So the first spot here is Alp Grum. I'm probably not going to keep saying the names because some of the names are really awkward for me to say. <laughs> so let's just avoid it. I don't usually have a photo and then a video of the same thing, but I've done it in this case because this is a bearded vulture. I think this is, I love that photo, and now we can see a video of it. So, this vlog is about 10 minutes long. Because it's about wildlife, I like to stay behind the camera so that it's the wildlife that's the star of the video. Now, if this was a commercial kind of documentary on the BBC or something, I think I think 10 minutes co can co cost well over $100,000. My budget for this video was about $400, which was basically all accommodation because I've found Switzerland is quite awkward to find budget accommodation. I would normally try and spend a lot less than that. So, this is, for real, I think, what you could see in about a week if you went wildlife watching in Pontresina. Or probably in a lot of places in Europe in the mountains. Anyway, so on the walk, I love this. I love finding scenic signposts in the mountains. This is an alpine heath on a forget-me-not. I've not tried to identify the forget-me-not species, but I'm going to guess it was an alpine species. This is a little blue butterfly. And the next photo is going to have a sort of man-made construction. Hmm, I wonder what it is. I didn't know to start off with, but eventually worked out. It was protection for the train track and the train from falling rocks. Incredible. So, on another day, went for a walk around a lake. I found the west side of this lake very good for flowers and also for seeing marmots. Here's a view of the lake. I find marmots are very variable. Sometimes they seem to be quite tame, but more often I find they don't like humans too much and they'll kind of hide away a bit and send off alarm calls. However, I've got some good views here. I think partly because I was early, no one else was on the path. And I tried to walk kind of gently, fairly quietly. And I do things like, if I'm walking and I see a marmot, or any animal, I'll aim, I'll try and demonstrate very clearly that I'm not walking towards it. Even if it means suddenly going, oh, well, I was going to walk that way, but I won't because I think they, they can see that you're not walking towards them. And, and lots of other things. Oh, look at this. Wow, I love this video clip. So, Pontresina is a valley in the mountains, in the Alps, and each of these, like, red dots on the... Um, each of these red dots here, numbered red dots on the map, represents a walk, typically which goes up into the mountains, probably on a side valley. This Val Minor one is fantastic because it actually circles a mountain that's kind of an isolated mountain top or peak. So it's not as steep and it's a, it feels more like a true circular walk, whereas a lot of the other walks you kind of walk up the valley and back down again. I think it's a little bit of overgrazing here. Some very friendly cows, but not so many flowers. But away from the cows, I still saw a lot of flowers and butterflies. And at the top here, high enough to see speciality high mountain birds of high mountain bird of Europe, the snow finch.
It's got white in the wing, which I like to imagine might be partly camouflage. But I guess it probably isn't because a lot of birds have colours in the wing. Obviously, up here is going to be covered in snow in the winter, so the snow finch just comes up here for the summer. Here's another day walk. Coming up here, used to be walking up alongside a glacier. Recently it's melted a lot. There's a lot less, less glacier yet left. This is the fancy sculpture at the entrance to this walk. It's a very popular walk. And here we can see the glacial scar. The glacier used to be tucked up. Where the glaciers retreated, we're just kind of left with this kind of scree slope. I still think it's a beautiful place. I'm not sure it's good news, there's not a glacier anymore. Oh, check this out. Um, that's a network of little streams and rivers forming where the glacier used to be. And this helicopter was supplying, there's a cabin at the top of this valley, so it was doing a supply run. Pretty sure, because I saw it kind of stop over the cabin and then come back down again. And this was another good spot where I saw a marmot. And in a moment, I'll be quiet. I got a really good view of one calling it. I'm sure it didn't know that I was here. And this marmot is the cover star of one of my books. There were good things about every walk. This walk, I really love the views. The next walk, Val de Fane, back on the east side of the valley, seemed to me to be very good at getting sort of in some of the wilder areas and I got good views of chamois and ibex here and of course more marmots. So this was the view at the start of the walk. I saw a group of three marmots sat together on watch which made me wonder if they were youngsters and then on the path ahead of me, I saw a chamois. It's being slightly skittish. In the end, I decided it was probably me. And even if it couldn't see me, it didn't look like it could see me. I wondered if it could smell me. So I chose to then carry on walking up the path. And it did then run away. Because I think it was then like, oh, okay, it's a human, I can see it. And, I mean, for a moment I thought, oh, maybe I should turn around and not disturb it. But, I mean, there will be other people coming up the path during the day, so some someone had to disturb it. And then further up the path, I saw this family group of Ibex. Again, not sure if they saw me or not. It does look like the adult might be watching me there. He seems to be fairly chilled about it. I didn't move, and after a while they started wandering up the hillside, which we'll see in a moment. I would guess this might be a natural part of their daily routine, which is that they would graze some of the longer grass further down in the valley at night time, and then when the humans start walking on the footpath, they then go back up into more remote areas. Oh, golden eagle flying over the um, ridge line. It's got white towards the end of the wing. The wings are fairly square. The tail is fairly square. 
So the squareness to me indicates eagle, and those white patches at the end of each wing tell me it's a golden eagle. They're obviously not perfectly square wings, but they're relatively square compared to other birds, and this is a wee tear. So again, remember, this is not a BBC nature documentary costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is just what we, what I would tip. I think this is pretty typical of what I might see if I have good weather for a week in the mountains in Europe. This is an alpine argus. Similar to basically everything I've included in this video, it's a species characteristic of the mountains. In the case of butterflies, a lot of them have evolved to live in the mountains because they wait for a particular temperature before they hatch and things like that, and that will be tuned to the particular temperatures you get in mountains. Whereas some birds like wheat here, although they are tough enough to survive in mountains, they can also live in other habitats as well. This is a walk from the sort of main town in the Pontresina Valley. This was by far the busiest walk that I did. Top tip if you're doing it, look up onto the green higher slopes that we just saw there and you can look for uh, chamois. This is a willow tit. Or tit mouse, if you're going with American English. About, for me, halfway up the walk, for some people towards the end of the walk, and for very keen walkers only a third of the way if you're doing the very long circular route, there's an open area which has a cabin and a large area of flower meadow where I saw lots of flower, uh, butterflies including that Provencal fritillary and this Osiris blue. And for bird watchers, one of the highlight birds of the Alps is the nutcracker. And I'm going to finish off this video with a couple of clips of nutcracker which I saw at this same spot in the pine trees. <laughs>